Welcome back, you have now entered the agency. I am your host, Agent M. Bay Arts, here at the Agency Art Studios. Uh, on this episode of Off Topic, I want to discuss the uh, inspiration behind the elongated necks of the agent character in nature. And so, like, the, the first thing that came to mind when I started creating these you know, characters in Asian and in African culture, uh, the women that wore the neck, wear the neck rings. Uh, and it was the, the Padang women of uh, Northern Thailand and the Ndebele tribes uh, in Africa, where women wore neck rings that elongated the neck, or at least took on the, uh, the look of an elongated neck. Uh, what's really happening in those situations are as the neck rings are added, the, um, the kind of collarbone is being pressed or pushed down, which creates the, the, the look of an elongated neck, whereas um, in reality, again, it's just kind of pushing down on the, on the bias. It's actually a, it's considered some, some more of a kind of body, uh, body deforming. Um, there's a lot of people that looked into um, uh, you know, the effects of that over time and what that, that, that could have, but I'm kind of, I don't comment on that culturally. It's not uh, fully kind of in, ingrained in, in, in my cult creations. <laughs> but um, what it, uh, what I did, you know, look at is that, you know, in those cultures, you know, that the symbolism behind the, the elongated neck is, um, represents a sense of beauty, um, pride, and, and, and charisma. Um, uh, and, and again, like the women wore that, and I think in, in either one or both of the cultures, uh, only women who were, well, I would say it had to be the uh, women in the, uh, in the Ndebele tribe, uh, they, it would be married women would wear them. Uh, so I know in the in the Asian in the, in the Padan culture it was uh, children from a young age you begin that at a young age wearing those uh, and so you know there's some you can see that there's already some cultural differences on on, on per, your reasons behind that but again this was just something that was kind of in the back of my mind like something I had seen you know over time you know whether it was you know watching you know, some documentary when I was young or just being you know kind of interested in in various. Uh, African tribal cultures and practices over time, and just being witness to them, thanks to my you know, parents, just kind of sharing a lot with us over you know in our lives, and so, um, and so that was always like kind of a, a reference point in the back of my mind, uh, and then artistically, uh, as far as any more traditional arts and, and modern art movements, you had I mentioned like Modigliani, I'm, Modigliani, his works had had. You know, elongated the necks um, just a little, just a tad. And he had these very like mask-like um, faces on his figures, um, and 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 his his interest and in what he was trying to convey through his work related more to what I was trying to do as far as connecting to the the the. Uh, well, in his case, it was like connecting to the expressing the the very like essence of his subject uh, or this, their spirit in a sense and so it was you know in, in using these kind of um, abstracted forms to convey who this figure was or who this person was in that you know in that in that uh, image or portrait um, I found myself doing I found myself doing the same things and this was even somewhat before I actually start you know researching his work or looking him up uh, and you know, at the point where I was, you know, only doing, you know, uh, oval-shaped faces uh, in which there was no, you know, defined features, and it was just like, you know, this reference to a mask. Um, I felt that same, you know, connection to his work, and so, you know, I essentially had been working my, you know, figures and, and elongated the neck and creating even more, I guess, energy and dynamism to the the the, the uh, portraits that I was creating. And then, you know, be it drawings and, and you know, into when I started painting them. Um, and as I continued to, you know, investigate what it was that I was doing in my work, I was, again, still wanting to communicate the, the medium through which I was moving to get these references, you know, again, using social media, well, primarily Instagram. Um, I was looking for a way to draw a connection between that medium in which I was using as a reference 
and what that might have meant and me having an interest in the surrealist movement you know ever since I had learned about it um, Renee McGree being one of my favorite uh, surrealist artists my favorite surrealist artist um, I was always curious about you know just the, the the connection between the subconscious and conscious mind and the physical and spiritual realm or um, and in that same way, you know, the surrealist Andre Breton wrote, wrote a lot about that and trying to connect to you know, these different spaces. And I started to look at the virtual realm as kind of a uh, an evolutionary subconscious, um, in a sense that it, it it the the lives that are, that are created in those spaces have become so or can become so almost separate from who we exist as in the in the physical space that you know it's it's kind of this merging between the two um the physical and virtual realms um, and so uh i wanted to try to find a way or continue to investigate and explore how i could use the neck to communicate this kind of jump between these two worlds and that led me to more research into symbolism of the neck you know i really you realize on the internet you can really pretty much look at look up anything and find that there might be some symbolism to it so i just started to you know google it you know what is the the neck symbolize in you know maybe in whatever cultures and i found that um in some in some cultures and uh the neck holds a symbolism between the connection between uh the physical world and the virtual world. So the head represents the I don't take nothing the, phys, uh, the physical and the spiritual world, and the head would represent the spiritual realm. The body represents the physical realm, and the neck was the bridge between the two. And so, when I started to read, you know, kind of see that connection, I I, I looked at that as you know. The same thing existing between the physical and virtual world, to where you know the head in in in, in my words or the neck just serves as you know, the bridge between you know how we jump in and out of the virtual and physical space that we interact in because you know we we're so intertwined with our devices and our connections to you know the global um, or our global connections in general, and so. Um, I was really like inspired to continue to you know use that as a, a kind of vehicle to express my ideas um, through the, the this bridge that was the neck and also the neck serves as one of the most vulnerable parts of our bodies to where you know um, even in, in how people present themselves speaking of body language you know if someone is kind of slumped over and you know kind of shrugging they're protecting their neck it shows a sense of you know insecurity or lack of pride, and um, because it's it's you know you're, you're in, in a sense protecting this very vulnerable part of your body, and then to do the opposite, you know, to, if you imagine someone who stands proudly with their head held high, they're showing that they're very confident, even though they're expressing and sh and, and and leaving their you know their neck open which is very vulnerable space place and you you have the connection to your um you know, your spinal cord back there in the back of your neck and then you know I'm not gonna talk about murder and stuff like that. But um but so it's 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 this vulnerable part of your body, one of the most vulnerable parts of your body, you know, if you sever that connection to your brain, you know, essentially uh you speak about, you know, um what that could, you know, lead to as far as death and so um to again express and show that part of your body that is the most insecure or that is the most vulnerable and to do it confidently you know when you merge those two things you get someone who is you know proud of what it is that they've become or who they are now you know it's it's showing their insecurities at a high level and um not at a high level, but showing their insecurities and being confident in what it is that they uh, are being, you know, kind of satisfied and, and, and happy with who it is that they are, regardless of what may seem an insecurity, I guess. And so, um, you, know, you kind of find that the things that you might be most insecure about are the things that 
make you stand out the most. Um, it makes you what makes you more unique from up from others, and that kind of kind of pushes you into your your into your niche and finding out you know kind of who you are as a person as well. And so um, I really you know I, I, in that in that regard I just got really inspired by continuing to or inspired to continue to use the neck as a, a, a motif in my works um, to express these ideas and from you know when I first started the necks was were always well I, I like to think that when I first started the necks were always continuous all the way into the head but when I look back through old sketchbooks I'm realizing how many times I explored ideas but didn't continue to do them and so like what really stuck the first time was just keeping a very curvilinear neck that moved around the uh, the 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 dimensions of the of the, the the canvas of the paper or or the um, or the painting and then um, but there were times when I started to you know break break apart the neck and have it you know disappear out of space or stop at one point and pick back up and when people look at it sometimes they ask why the head like is is uh, decapitated or separated from the body and you know I explain these these same you know concepts and ideas that led me to this point. Um, as far as why I'm, you know, why my, my, why my figures have these elongated or uh, kind of seemingly separated necks. And so, um, you know, I get to the point, like, even in these paintings where they're, uh, some of them are stay connected the whole time, but they're also jumping in and out of these kind of windows of space that kind of reference this, you know, jumping in and out of these worlds that we exist in to where, you know, we think about our virtual presence just as much as we think about our physical presence. And so in times when we're in our physical bodies, we might be in a mindset where we're in these virtual worlds and trying to figure out where these worlds are kind of mend and meld and, and, and where we exist within those spaces. Um, and so that is the you know general inspiration and, and concept behind the, the, the neck. You know, what's the neck about? what people like to ask. Most of, most, honestly, most people actually don't ask specifically about what the neck is. They ask why the head is where it is. Um, and, you know, and then once I, you know, kind of draw the connection between the neck and, you know, the symbolism between the both, or between the head and the body and the spirit and the virtual realm, the physical realm, people begin to understand or, or get a, a, an understanding of, you know, my, my inspirations and motivations to create my works. And so, uh, you know, that's the heat for today. Um, uh, next, we, you know, coming up, we'll have more, again, more content coming up. Um, an expansion of all of that. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Be notified. And, you know, until next time, Embe, out of here.